If you've done any programming with a loosely typed scripting language for a while, languages like JavaScript, for example, where the cost of declaring and creating some object is virtually free, both in terms of programming resources, the amount of code you write, and runtime requirements, then, then you, you will certainly, certainly have run, run into duck typing. <laughs> Imagine that you have a function which expects a duck object. However, in this method, all that's really required is the walk method of the passed in object, the swim method, and the quack method. The function doesn't care if the object has a bill property or not, or a feathers property, or anything like that. It just wants to ask the object to swim, walk, and quack. If the object can't do one of these things, then a runtime error is raised. In essence, what's happening here is exemplified by the following saying. If it walks like a duck, swims like a duck, and quacks like a duck, then I call that thing a duck. Now, you may say that duck typing is a little too dangerous to use. An example is a function that expects an object with a cleave method. In certain scenarios, cleave may mean split something apart, and in others, stick something together. The behavior changes according to the object passed in. In reality, such issues are rare and can be avoided by proper testing. The other thing to grasp is that duck typing is all about viewing object orientation in terms of message passing, and not about designing and implementing some class and interface model. It is ideally suited to a dynamic programming language with loose typing, and provides a basic form of polymorphism without the verbosity and strict typing of an inheritance class model. If you program in JavaScript or Ruby or Python, I would recommend that you eschew the standard class model-based object orientation and embrace the freedom of duck typing.